Hi, this is Andrea Towers with TV Guide Magazine and TVInsider.com, and I am here at New York Comic Con with the cast of The Peripheral. Hello. Hi. Welcome Hi. to New York Comic Con. I hope it's going well for you so far. Fantastic. So far. <laughs> Seeing all the fans and then getting all the reactions to your show, um, which is such a fun, cool, twisty show. Uh, what inspired you all to come aboard or what really excited you about wanting to, to join this project? Um, oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I came onto the show about three years ago now. And for me, it was really, you know, just from the offset, it was William Gibson, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy. You know, those are three incredible heavy hitters in sci-fi. Um, and I was immediately excited by the role of Flynn Fisher. You know, her story and how she is able to travel from 2032 North Carolina to 2100 London. And her experiences between that, you know, she was a really um, complex character that I felt, you know, was really worthy of, of uh, digging into. Anyone else? You know? <laughs> exactly the same, when you put that team together, you just want to do it. And then when I came on board, Chloe was attached, so simple. I wanted to work with her. <laughs> it wasn't a deterrent. Damn. <laughs> uh, well, can you explain, uh, or can you tease rather, uh, kind of a little bit about your characters and who you play? Yeah, sure. I, I play a character called Will Fenetherson. Um Yeah, Wolf is a in the novel he's described as a publicist, but I think it's a really nice way of um, saying fixer, which is what he is. Um, he liaises with the society's elite. Um, yeah, and actually, one of the characters he's most close to is Lev, played by JJ. And um, I can't really say too much about Wilf and his background, you just have to watch it, but that's, that's who I play. Yeah, I play Flynn Fisher. <laughs> I play Flynn Fisher. She's a young woman in uh, North Carolina who uh, puts on a headset one day thinking that she's jockeying in a simulation game. And then we start to realize that she's operating a real body in future London. Um, and she is able to use what she learns in the future maybe as a roadmap to fix the potential, you know, doom that's headed towards their current state. Uh, I play Lev Zubov and uh, Gibson had his envisaged that uh, envisioned that the future London would have been taken over by Russian oligarchs um, he wrote this in 2014 he did not write it this year so pretty extraordinary uh, and, and we, we uh, are fighting for the power of London yeah um, I play Sharice Newland and is who's also one of the um, the three pillars of power structure and uh, we have some interesting debates about that, don't we? Um, <laughs> but yeah, she uh, she runs the Research Institute, so she's responsible for all the sciencey stuff that takes. <laughs> so, uh, that's the sciencey stuff. I don't know what I don't know anything about science, um, but I, play <laughs> but I know. But I, I play a someone who knows a lot about <laughs> sciencey. So I am a scientist. Yeah, I am a scientist. That's what I am. That's why I play. Uh, I love the VR simulation part of it. I think that's such a fun part uh, of the show. Uh, if and I'm curious if you guys, uh, as you know, as your real life selves, not as your characters, had to uh, kind of be in a VR simulation scenario where your life kind of depended on it. How would you fare? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I play a lot of video games, so I feel like I have a little bit of an edge for it. I'm ready. <laughs> I like I like to beat the shit out of people. No. <laughs> uh, so I'm, you know, I'm ready. Apocalypse, here I come. <laughs> I'm gonna look at you to save the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, guys. <laughs> What do you think? Um, yeah, I, I'd be ready, definitely. I mean, I'm a, I, I was a gamer in the past, not so much anymore. Um, but I played VR for the first time uh, like this year, and it was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. I'm, I'm super competitive, so um, yeah, I'd, I'd have a good time actually. I'd be a disaster. <laughs> I, I put VR on for the first time this year. I got so motion sick. I had to really? lie down. I went green. It was it a disaster. It was horrendous. Life, I don't yeah. get motion sick at the sea or on roller coasters. I put a VR on. Vomiting. Green. <laughs> so don't trust me to save the world through VR. No. Damn. I mean, we're still trying to figure out how Instagram works, <laughs> aren't we? You had to be taught, didn't you? Yes, oh, yes. something yeah, like that. Yes. My first ever Instagram account, and I didn't know the difference between No, no. Well, no. I, I've been, <laughs> I've been off for a year and a half, and I'm like, oh, how does this work? So we're in good company there. Good. Could well, we we could save you guys. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Well, you could just have Chloe save everyone, yeah. and you'll, yes. you'll be fine, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Five foot five. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. 
Um, what were some of the the challenges of shooting this? Um, especially because it just it seems like there were a lot of action sequences and a lot of also a lot of emotional uh, moments between characters. Uh, was there anything that you found really challenging or um, just like a, a moment that you really kind of uh, that's really memorable from filming? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I had the, 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 you know, enjoyment and also the, <laughs> the intensity of going between both worlds. Um, I felt really lucky to be able to, you know, have, have such a strong footing in both worlds. And it was actually very interesting because we started off the show by shooting with just Jack and I. So it was really a lot of the trailer stuff is what we started with. So Jack and I got so comfortable just being in the trailer, this tiny little set, super intimate. And then within like a week, I was like thrust into future London in the outfit <laughs> of my peripheral <laughs> with, with Gary over here. And I was like, oh my God, I actually feel completely out of water, which was good. It was a really good experience to kind of feel that juxtaposition. So I, I just think it's going to be really fun for people to see uh, how much the, the, the tone shifts between both worlds, but that they feel so intimately inclined toward each other. And the characters are so rich and so dense, and the ensemble that is this show is, is really fantastic. And just watching it as an audience member, I'm blown away by these actors, and I think everyone you know, ate up every moment of their role in the <laughs> best way ever. And I just, I, I don't know. I'm very proud of being part of this. Mm. Well, I can't wait for everyone to watch it. It is such a fun show. Uh, thank you guys for stopping by. The Peripheral premieres on Prime Video on October 21st.